Hey everybody, Chad Wesley Smith here, joined by US Open champion, 800 pound at 198 deadlifter, maybe world record holder by the time that you're actually watching this, uh, Ben Pollock. And Ben is gonna talk to us about uh, a couple points in the deadlift, his specialty, you know, not a deadlift only guy because you're a real power lifter and do all three lifts, <laughs> but, uh, but definitely his, his best lift, some of his so some tips for you and some things that he's personally working on. So take it away. Okay. Um, so by far the biggest difference in my deadlift training, what took me from kind of a, a low 600 puller to a 700 and 800 pound puller was incorporating the sumo deadlift into my training routine. Um, and even if I'm not pulling sumo in competition, um, I still like to incorporate it and vice versa. If I'm going to pull sumo on a meet, I like to pull conventional and training occasionally because I find that the two are very complementary. And personally, I have good leverages for the deadlift, right? So um, whether I'm pulling sumo, sumo or conventional, I'll be pretty strong. I think even if you have bad leverages for one or the other, it's still a valuable thing to incorporate into your training um, because they work the same muscles in um, subtly but importantly different ways um, that I don't think you can get with other exercises. For me, the difference when I'm pulling sumo or conventional is very slight in terms of how my torso is positioned. So if I'm pulling sumo, I'll get set up with my feet um, fairly close to the rings on a deadlift bar. Um, and when I get set, my torso is fairly upright, um, which is pretty, pretty typical for, for a sumo puller. But when I get set conventional, it's still, still fairly upright. Um, so from the side, you can kind of see, there's a slight difference in, in torso angle, but it's, it's not a big one. Even though that's the case, um, there's a big difference in how much my, my glutes, my hips, my adductors and abductors are working um, in the sumo versus the con conventional deadlift. So right now I'm getting ready for a meet. I'm gonna pull sumo at this meet. I haven't pulled sumo because of knee pain for almost a year. Um, and so I've been exclusively, exclusively training sumo. But in general, I would be alternating those. I would be pulling sumo uh, twice uh, in a row and then conventional the next time. So it would be week one sumo, week two sumo, week three conventional, and then back. Um, if I were going to pull conventional in the meet, I would do it the opposite. I'd pull conventional, conventional sumo. And that does two things. At first, it gives my lower back a break um, if, I'm, if I'm adding in that sumo because sumo tends to put a little bit less stress for me, and I think for a lot of people, um, on your lower back. For conventional, I get a little bit more lower back work. So again, if I'm pulling sumo all the time, I'm kind of missing out on that. And I've really noticed um, recently as I've started incorporating sumo back into my training, it's skyrocketed even though I haven't pulled heavy sumo probably since um, starting to train for Boss of Bosses in May of last year. So now we're in May 2017. It's probably been May, May of 2016 since I trained sumo heavy. Um, but you know, it's come back in a, a matter of weeks um, because I think they're very complementary. I do think that you need to be careful about how you incorporate kind of switch stance is what I call it deadlift into your training. Um, I have a lot of clients who, you know, say that their sumo and conventional um, deadlifts are almost identical, but they're basically doing a conventional deadlift with, with a wide stance. Um, so when you're pulling sumo, you need to be very careful that you are trying to get your torso more upright, that you are shifting um, your weight onto your posterior chain even if it means reducing the weight significantly. That's actually a good thing if you're using it as an assistance exercise. You don't want to be introducing a huge amount of additional stress onto your body. You wanna use it as something that can um, function as a hypertrophy movement, if that's what you need, or it's just something that's gonna help you activate and strengthen those muscles better um, in your competition lift. So I typically, for clients, will have them do sets of five to eight um, with somewhere between 40 and 60%. Um, of their, their competition style uh, deadlift when they're using sumo as an accessory exercise or using the alternate styles an accessory exercise. The second thing I wanna talk about is uh, your setup. So my setup on most lifts is pretty intricate and involved. And I don't think that's necessary. I do it because it kind of helps calm me down in competition. When I have a routine to follow and I can go through these steps in my mind, um, it helps me kind of get in the zone more. I don't think that's necessary, but I do think that having certain cues, um, physical and mental, can really help you to um, enhance your technique to pull um, or squat or bench uh, more weight, both short term and long term. And for deadlift, my number one thing is, well, two number one things are to keep my lats tight, um, lock my lats in, and to be patient off the floor. 
So when I set up for a deadlift, and I'm gonna do sumo because that's what I'm comfortable with right now, but regardless of which stance, when I set up for a deadlift, I raise my hands up because that gives me a nice stretch in my lats and helps me just think about my lats, right? And then I pull them down, I'm still thinking about my lats even though the position is the complete opposite. So that when I get set up, I'm still thinking about my lats, I can still keep them locked in more easily. If I'm trying to pull with straps, it's, it's real hard for me to, to kind of get down like here, strap up, and then try and get my lats set. It's, it's difficult. If you're having trouble, one, one cue that's you know, frequently used in setting your lats, um, is to try and pull your elbows towards your hip pockets because um, that kind of makes you think down and back. It doesn't really work for me. I like to think of external rotation around the shoulders, um, so opening my chest up like this because my shoulders and chest are very tight. And so if I'm not doing that, it's very difficult for me to activate my lats. The other thing I like to have people do is to do some very light sets of um, either pull downs where you're pulling all the way down, trying to pull down all the way to your belly button, even if you can't do that on like a machine or something. Um, or uh, kind of stiff arm pull downs like at a, um, a tricep machine um, where you've got your arms out in front of you and you're just pulling down, trying to use your lats to pull down because that's a very similar motion to, to how you should be getting set. Once you do get set, see a lot of people who try and be explosive off the floor, which does work for a lot of people. Um, I think it also doesn't work for a lot of people because when you try to be explosive, a lot of times what happens is that your strongest link is, is gonna be what's doing uh, the dominant portion of the movement so if your strongest link is your lower back, your quads, your hips are just going to shoot up and you're in a very bad position to lock out. And, you know, it doesn't matter how much or how fast you can get the weight off the floor if you can't lock it out. So instead, I like to think about being patient. Um, if you've seen some of my other lifts, you'll know when I'm pulling with the deadlift bar, there's a lot of whip in the bar. And so the bar bends a lot before it breaks the floor. Even with a stiff bar, I like to think about being patient off the floor um, because otherwise I lose that position. So the difference um, with a lightweight, probably won't look that, probably won't look that uh, extreme. So if I try and go fast off the floor, I'm kind of falling backwards there um, versus trying to be um, more slow, more patient off the floor, keeping my lat set. I can get that um, explosion towards the top of the lift rather than the bottom where all that momentum is kind of wasted for me. Um, you'll have to experiment with both, both styles because neither one is right or wrong, but I feel like a lot of people just assume that they need to be explo as explosive as possible right away, um, and they're kind of losing out on a lot of potential because of that. Um, so when I approach the bar, I try to um, find kind of my, my sweet spot where I can feel like I'm still getting a little bit of quad in the movement, um, but I'm getting my feet as far out as possible um, so that I can kind of shorten that range of motion. And I'm just, I'm just going by feel here. Um, but once I get set, I'm squeezing my glutes. Um, I, don't, I don't brace my core until I raise my arms up. And then as I go down, I'm really thinking about trying to open up my hips um, to keep that torso as upright as possible before I get set, even though it's now that I'm starting to set my hook grip. And you know maybe we can do something on hook grip, but I try and dig, my, dig the crease of my hand as far into the bar as I can before I wrap my thumb around. And then when I'm doing these pulls, I'm not trying to get tension in my body. I'm just trying to find kind of the sweet spot for my thumb um, where I can feel the, the base of my thumb directly under the bar. When I start the pull, I externally rotate my shoulders first and then use the bar to pull my hips down before I start the stunt. And that was kind of a sloppy rep, a little far, far from the bar. Um, all those cues, I'm not thinking about them while I do the lift. Um, they've become kind of muscle memory to me. And again, that's because the deadlift um, is something that comes natural. With the squat and the bench press, I have to think about every one of those cues. And it's very difficult. And really it's holding me back, but it takes time to move from the, the, the state where um, you have to think about the cues versus you don't. When I'm doing deadlift, oh, conventional, it's almost exactly the same, except my um, uh, feet are closer together. So I get set up, I take a stance that's just inside the knurling. Um, I do the same thing, raise my arms to get the lats up, brace my core. Um, as I go down now, I'm trying to think about keeping tension in my glutes, um, but I get my grip set exactly the same way and I initiate the movement exactly the same way. Um, really the only difference for me between the two is the leverage. Um, where I have a little bit le better leverage as uh, when I'm pulling sumo and so I can lift a little bit more weight that way. 
And the third tip is something that I'm working on myself, something that I'm trying to incorporate more into my training because I've you know, slacked off on it for a very long time, and that's to incorporate grip training into your deadlift training. Um, so for me, grip is definitely a weak point. Um, I've tried to hit 800 at 181 um, twice now in a meet and miss both times on grip. And it's just something that I've had a lot of trouble strengthening and something that I haven't focused on in my training really ever um, because it, it was never a problem. And I pull hook grip, which usually, um, you know, strength is not an issue with hook grip. It's, it's more technique. It's more um, kind of using leverage almost um, to help hold your grip on. But you can see, you know, if you pulled with straps, you can usually deadlift more um, because your grip's not a factor. So for me, um, when I'm trying to add grip, grip work to my training, I start by doing all my warm-up sets, double overhand, until I can't anymore. So generally, that means I'm gonna work up to four or 500 pounds, not using a hook grip, just pulling double overhand, and trying to hold the bar at the top position for as long as I can. I think those static holds are very important when you're trying to strengthen your grip training because they're one of the most specific things when you're trying to strengthen your deadlift grip because they're one of the most specific things that you can do um, for that exercise. And generally, specificity is gonna be better. Um, I also like thick bar holds and deadlifts for the same reason. Um, and, you know, I'm trying to find um, grip specific exercises that um, do carry over the deadlift. And that's some one area where I'm struggling. Um, I think that when it comes to training, everyone's very individual. And so there's not gonna be one right thing that works for you. And you have to experiment with a lot of different things um, to kind of find what's gonna carry over to your competition lifts. Um, but even if grip is not a problem for you right now, I really recommend um, trying to add a little grip work into your training because if you plan on one day being a great deadlifter, even if you're not there yet, it's gonna be important. Um, and you know, the less you have to worry about, the better. There's a lot of different stuff out right now about how to pull hook. I feel like, in my opinion, a lot of those people have huge hands. And if you have a huge hand, grip is gonna be less, less of a problem. I don't, my hands are pretty average sized. Um, and it's not an excuse, right? Because plenty of people with average sized hands have enormous grip strength and I do not. Um, but I do think that you need to approach your hook grip a little bit different if you have trouble getting your thumb all the way around the bar. So the first thing I do when I'm thinking about pulling hook is to straighten my arm and try and adjust my wrist. I don't know what the right term is, but make sure that my thumb and my forearm is a straight line, not bent like this, um, where my thumb is then going off to an angle. So thumb is a straight line. And as I grip the bar, I'm jamming this crease between my thumb and my index finger as far into the bar as I can. Um, so I'm really trying to push down um, and make sure that I can get as much of my thumb around the bar as possible. When I wrap my th uh, fingers around the bar, I'm not thinking about anything in particular. I'm just trying to get as much of my fingers on my thumb as I can. Even if they're gonna come off later, I feel like the more of my fingers that I can get around there, the better. And then I'm almost pulling my wrist straight again. So as I wrap, I'm gonna have to bend my wrist just a little bit so my thumb's going off at this angle. I'm gonna use the bar to pull the wrist straight again so that I have this straight line from my thumb all the way up. For me, to find that sweet spot, it takes a little bit of time. If I just wrap like this, I kind of lose it. So I like to jerk the bar a little bit to help rotate it so that I can find the part where it feels like this space of my thumb right here, um, right under, I guess, the, the, th the knuckle of the thumb is directly under the bar. So you almost have a sandwich between the floor, um, that, that pad of your thumb, and then the bar itself. Um, because if it's a little bit to either side, your wrist is gonna bend when the weight gets heavy. And as soon as your wrist bends, you're done. Like, it's just almost impossible to hold on that way, especially because you essentially have a double overhand at that point. Like I mentioned earlier, I don't really know how to strengthen the hook grip, but I found that one thing that makes a huge difference in how strong my hook grip is, is the mobility of my thumb, which makes sense because I'm trying to get as much of my thumb around the bar as possible. And so my massage therapist, Tammy Marquez, who works um, at Kinetic Body Science in Austin has um, uh, a thing that she does that I probably can't duplicate where she almost dislocates my thumb, but it's really trying to get a stretch in this area, right where you're trying to jam into the bar. And you can do it yourself if you just kind of hold loosely on that knuckle and just kind of stretch that area. You can also get a butter knife and try and rub, dig the butter knife in, just like kind of a, a Graston or Gua Sha movement into around the base of your thumb on both sides. Um, and that can kind of help loosen up this area and allow you to get a little bit more mobility. 
even a little bit for me makes a huge difference in terms of how well I'm able to position my thumb and then how strong my hook grip is. So those are kind of the things that I think are most important. Um, there's a lot of little nuances that you can add, um, a lot of different, again, individual variations that you'll need to learn, understand, um, and address. Um, but I think for most people, just focusing on even two or three of those things um, will make a huge difference in your training.